everyone has the same five core areas of their life that ultimately determine how happy they'll be. Unfortunately, most of us have developed failure habits in each, and it's Will Moore's mission to help replace those with success habits to maximize momentum. After exiting his business for a combined nine-figure sum, Will learned it's not just about becoming an entrepreneur of your career, but an entrepreneur of the most important business you'll ever run, your life. And to crush it in your life requires firing on all cylinders in your five cores by continually taking action, building habits, and maintaining balance in each. Hello, and welcome to the Five Core Life Podcast with Will Moore, founder of More Momentum. If you're not already, please make sure to follow and subscribe to the Five Core Life Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You get notified when episodes air every week. On today's episode of the Five Core Life, host Will Moore sits down with Robbie Kramer, relationship and confidence expert, to discuss how to be a confident man or woman in a relationship. Robbie shares the keys to show confidence and feel confident in a relationship. He'll also explain how to turn yourself into an approach machine why dating apps don't come close to his top ways of meeting people, and other tips on how to master the dating world. Are you ready to fire on all cylinders? If so, let's go. What's up, man? Hey, man. How's it going, Will? It's going real good. How are you doing? Good, good. Where are you you from? Where are you today? Where are you? you Uh, I'm in uh, in, in Tulum, Mexico right now. I'm typically... uh, I typically live in Kiev, Ukraine, but I'm a LA guy originally, so I'm all over the place. <laughs> okay, so you're that's where you're living, but you're from LA, and what brought you there? Uh, from LA originally, uh, I was kind of like a digital nomad um, since like 2016, just kind of living all over the world, um, trying out different places, and uh, fell in love with Eastern Europe. Um, especially as a single guy, um, if you've ever been over there, you know, Eastern European women are kind of known for their, their good looks. Um, I also fell in love with the culture. Right. Um, fell in love with the culture. I'm, I'm have some Ukrainian roots. So for whatever reason, I just kind of felt at home there and, uh, and moved there full time in 2018. Um, and, uh, you know, I still, I hate the winter, so. I'm in Tulum to avoid that with my girlfriend. So, yeah. Yeah, winters aren't fun. I'm in Chicago yeah. right now and uh Oh yeah. It's it's coming in it's coming in hot. We actually had a fairly slow start to the winter, which was nice. Um it it, it kind of December wasn't too bad, but January now we're we're starting to feel it. And it's not too fun. I've heard horror stories about Chicago winters, but luckily never experienced one. So, let's get into now that the pleasantries are out of the way and we've gotten to chat a little bit, let's get into it. Let's, let's um, tell people, I didn't get a chance to fully introduce you. Why don't you tell people probably the best to come from you, who you are, what you're doing, founder of Inner Confidence. Let's hear it. Yeah, I'm a uh, dating and confidence coach. Um, I've been you know, a full-time coach. This has been my profession uh, in business since 2008. So it's been a while. I'm 38 years old. Um, and uh, before that, I had a, you know, my, my first job at a university was working in a private uh, equity firm, hated it, hated the nine to five thing. And I had basically zero experience really kind of in the in the dating world. Um, you know, I had had some girlfriends through, you know, high school, a little bit in college. But once I was kind of spit out into the, the normal world was like, I don't really understand this whole dating thing at all. Um, so I just kind of became, you know, interested in it as a way to, to solve my own pain really. Um, and, uh, just became kind of just fascinated with how social dynamics work, how attraction works between a man and a woman. Um, and, uh, just kind of became my own biggest success story over the years. Um, created a blog way back in the day. Um, and that's kind of how I became a coach. A few guys followed my blog and they're like, Hey, will you pay me to coach? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sure. And then it just kind of turned into a business. I started a podcast a few years back. Uh, the podcast is pretty, you know, widely listened to. Um, and, uh, I do trainings all over the world, different, different, uh, you know, 
guys fly, fly to, to the audio okay yeah sorry, sorry I just I put can... my headphones in so i can hear you better and oh better experience. okay um yeah so i leave i leave trainings all over the world obviously now during the pandemic that's not really happening um but uh but yeah it's been it's been a wild ride obviously never expected to for this to be my profession but i love helping people and um you know to for for a lot of guys to come to me they're typically more analytical engineering background math background sort of guys um and you know no one really ever teaches you dating skills at least no one ever taught me you either kind of learn it from like a, a older brother maybe from your dad um but it's one of those things that guys don't really talk about uh especially if you're not like part of a you know a sports team growing up i i found that the one interesting thing is that call uh athletes guys who play competitive sports usually have a much easier time with women than guys who haven't that's like the most concrete differentiating thing uh, between guys who struggle versus guys who don't did you grow up playing a competitive team sport or not and i played golf so yep yep i play, I, I i did as well <laughs> basketball tennis um mm -hmm. soccer i played a little lacrosse golf i love i got more into that later but that's interesting. Is that because it's just your that competitive nature in you kicks in, or you there's something innate? If you have that competitive drive in sports, you also have that like I'm gonna go out and find me a lady or or a man. No, um, it's actually more about the kind of like the male bonding and like the locker room banter. Um, you kind of develop like a thick skin, you know, being yeah. on a, a sports team with a bunch of other dudes. You guys you give each other crap. You tease each other. You talk about girls, you know, and it, it's really it's it's actually more that like male bonding that teaches you kind of like how to kind of how to be cool in a weird way, how to not really care. Um, one of the biggest things I, I see that, you know, I used to struggle with and my clients struggle with is they, they just care too much um, about, you know, getting rejected or how people view them or, you know, and when when you're with a bunch of guys who just want to give you shit all day long. You know, right. they make it their job to pick on you if you're kind of, you know, if you lost the game or, you know, you missed the, the penalty kick at the end of the soccer game. Like, you're the, you know, you're the goat. Um, but uh, not greatest of all time if they're using that term for goat now. But, you know, <laughs> you're the guy they dog on. So, they, right. Um, right. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that's for – so it's this kind of this weird thing that um, that you develop just being in that in that atmosphere versus not. Versus a lot of guys, if they, you know, played a more sort of, you know, if they played tennis or golf or chess or something that's more individual based, they may have not had that, that arena to develop those social yeah. skills that really translate to women. Because, you know, when it comes to women, um, you know, it's a competitive dating marketplace. Um, and women are looking to see how do you handle so how do you handle your, yourself in front of other guys in front of like, how social are you? Um, right. You know, how confident are you? How can you, you know, if, if something comes up where you need to, I don't know, take a risk or, you know, tell someone off. Right. Can you do that? Can you, know? you do it? Right. Can, um, can you handle uh, you know, the nonsense when you need to? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a really fascinating topic. Uh, I remember, do you remember there was a show, obviously you're in a totally different league than this guy, but it just, this whole thing reminds me, the pickup artist on MTV, like, 15, I yeah, way back. 15 years ago. Um, yeah. And I just remember watching that, and that was more like, I feel like gimmicky, and he was giving you like little tricks and stuff. But really, right, if you want to, if you want a plant to grow, you got to water it at the roots, and you got to, you got to, so, so that it's doing it the right way versus just stretching on its leaves. I just made that analogy, totally. up, and it's not the best one I've ever had, but you get the point. I <laughs> know, um, I like it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so no, I'm like, glad you brought that up. Um, uh, sorry to cut you off. Was there anything? That... No, nope, no. Nope. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, um, you, you got to do it the right way to get confidence. You can't just fake it, right? So go, please go on. Yeah, that that's kind of the problem with all that pickup stuff, um, especially the stuff from, you know, 15 years ago back in the day. Um, that was kind of like the evolution or the 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 beginnings of this industry, which, like, which um, you know, has evolved a lot, thank God. 
Um, <laughs> you know, but that and back in the day when guys were looking for dating advice, that's kind of all there was. When I got involved, that's all there was. And I was like, this is weird. You know, you're supposed to go out to, to bars and say these weird lines and dress all funny and do this crazy stuff. Um, and there was nothing else out there. So I tried it, but I, I very quickly, I failed miserably, um, as did most of the guys trying it. Um, right. And uh, it, it's kind of like I use the, the analogy, you're, you're trying to put like whipped cream on shit. Um, <laughs> am I allowed to swear on here, by the way? Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, okay, please, good. Please yeah. So you take it, you know, like to be an attractive guy, you've got to be well-rounded. You have to have your health in order. You've got to have, you know, your wealth. What, you know what your what your purpose as a man are you at least working towards that yep. um you know you gotta have you've gotta have a decent you know physique like you have to have these natural baseline things um mm -hmm. you know your relationship with spirit um whether that's you know w whatever that is like the if you know who if you know yourself you're going to be a much more attractive man and all of the all the kind of gimmicky stuff you know the lines or the techniques it it totally fails to address those main things and really that's why a woman's going to be attracted to you based on you know how masculine you are um how willing you are to um deal with confrontation and they, they usually have a really good spidey sense of that um so like when i got started with all that stuff i was overweight i was uh, about 60 pounds heavier than i am now um you know i was pretty dorky like i mentioned just kind of like a golf nerd um, and I was, I was totally scared of confrontation. Um, and I was trying to go out and use these, you know, pick up the pick up nonsense and it wasn't working. And I was like, okay, what's going on? So it wasn't. So then I was like, all right, let's, let's really get you can, here. Right, they can smell through weight. that. They smell the food. Totally. Like you can, you can exactly. say whatever you want, but it's in your eyes and how you deliver it. A hundred percent. Yeah. And obviously with a woman who gets a lot of attention from men, you know, the more attention she gets, the easier it is. She's going to smell that. It's it, and they're going to smell it. You know, one glance. It's, one glance. They, they know everything. They know. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it, it is amazing. It's an inch. It's a. It's a super interesting topic, and and I'll, I'm really happy to have you on because we haven't ever really had anybody that that we we've, we've covered this this topic with. You know, like we talk about confidence a lot, and obviously confidence naturally, if you have it, you're going to do better in the dating world or whatnot. Um, you know, somebody like me, I'm like kind of going back in time because I've been married for, you know, a while and just going back to like that dating world of when it was like approaching a woman. And, and, and I'm, you know, I was in the, the era of you actually had to approach a, a live human being to, to, to date them. <laughs> I, I just yes. missed I, when I met my wife, like they came out with like match.com and, or, or they had match.com, I guess, but like the, Tinder and all, all the all the dating apps and all that those were none of those were a thing, and it was like you had to actually like I met my wife in a bar and like a lot of people yeah. like you know and when you think about it, it's crazy that aspect of dating how we've gone from like up and you know up until this last really like ten to fifteen ten years really um, of the history of man like where you had to actually physically come across this other person and have some sort of interaction and hope you hit it off and then you. And now you've got like a zillion options. Yet, I don't know if it's helping. That's the crazy thing. You would think it, it would actually be, but... makes it worse. Um, yes, do tell. And yeah, it makes it much worse. And all of my clients, I force them to go out and approach women in real life. Um, especially now during you know the pandemic, you can uh, even even with masks on, you can still go out and you see a woman walking down the street. Who says you can't go talk to her, right? Um, right. Obviously she's not expecting it. And that's, that's one of the beauties behind it is you stand out. You're different. Basically when, when it comes to dating and attraction, like if you just kind of do the opposite of what the pack is doing, you have a, a better chance for success. And every guy, you know, is on Tinder is on only on these dating sites, but there's such a humongous like signal to noise ratio. Like if you're a, a good looking girl, you have so many messages. You just don't even have time to go through them. So right. Right, you're right. just you know, it, it's such a a tough strategy for guys using these online dating sites because you're just going to get buried in the shuffle. God, and it's fascinating. It, yeah, it's it's so difficult. Um, even 
you know, you know, so and looks are way more of a factor than they than they really are in real life. Because if you're just looking at a photo, which could be obviously doctored, photoshopped, right? Um, which enhanced. I'm sure most people probably do. Oh, 100 percent. Everyone, you know, like, <laughs> um, and you're not really getting I mean, obviously, you can tell a lot of, through a photo, but you're not getting that same energy that you would get in a face to face conversation, which is why so many of these online dates you know, you, you come in with this, this raised amount of expectation, you've spent all this time kind of chatting back and forth, you show up, and then the vibe is just totally different from, you know, that person you were chatting with. So oftentimes, just having that, those higher expectations, because you've invested so much time. Um, and I, and I hear this a lot from women, like, wow, he seems so amazing online. But then he showed up and he just he, he just wasn't really confident. Oh, I just yeah. didn't really feel the chemistry is, is typically what you'll hear right. a woman say. Um, well, and you got to feel for all and, these uh, people because it goes both ways. Sorry to interrupt you. I was just going to say, like, I, I can see it going both ways to where, like, those guys that have a lot of, you know, game in terms of the, their rapping, how they talk, mm -hmm. like, they're um, – but maybe, you know, physically may not, like, immediately to a woman go, oh, wow, that's like a Greek god. But then you just right. get you get them in there for that, just like we were saying earlier. Like they know immediately. Like you get them in there for uh, you know ten seconds, and and you have that spark with somebody. It doesn't really matter, especially with women. We're we're fortunate as men. They they care. Less, we are. It seems <laughs> they do. Um, yeah, they care. But... Yeah, especially you know, I I think when women you know are, are in their early twenties or late teens, they care a little bit more about looks. But the older they get, the more they want like a guy who's masculine and confident and got his kind of shit together um right and so i tell guys you don't have to be good looking but you just have to present yourself well you have to look good you have to dress well you have to you know groom right. yourself well you can't you carry can't yourself well smelling like a, a, a right like a 10-day sack of potatoes like you gotta at <laughs> least have to where she doesn't go whoa right and then but then from there it's this other stuff so let's get into the other stuff like so so the, the confidence are there certain you know, do you teach people certain sort of like, okay, this is how, like, and it, okay, let me phrase this right. Is it like a fake it till you make it thing? Like, these are the things a confident person would do when they meet. And so start doing that. And then you'll start to be develop that habit and it'll start to become, or do you, uh, do you do something different? How do you, how do you go through that? Yeah, there, there's elements to that. Um, some people say like, let the body lead the mind. So when it comes to body language, that sort of thing, a lot of guys will come in with really bad body language, which projects, you know, the opposite of confidence. And so if you simply just make a conscious effort to change your body language, um, you know, sit up in your chair, walk with a, a little bit more of a swagger, you're going to feel a little bit strange doing some of these things, even trying to talk in a deeper voice. A lot of guys come to me and they mm. speak really like from up in their, mm. in their throat versus kind of down. And making that's a conscious changes too, right sorry to interrupt but right like if you're confident yeah. you're you're more like okay what's up let's go versus totally oh, hey will you talk to me yeah i get that <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's um so you can make those changes you know you can fake it if you will you could try to talk in an actual deeper voice and your voice will become deeper uh you can consciously pay attention to how you're walking how you're moving through the space and you'll become more confident so you can kind of call that fake it till you make it um, yeah. and, but to develop real confidence, I like to say confidence is purely, uh, it comes from wins, right? You're going to be confident that you can do X, Y, Z because you've done it many times right. and you usually succeed at it. Right. And you can't lie to yourself, right? If, if you know, you're going to walk up to a girl and you know, you've approached a hundred women and you've gotten, you know, one, one phone number, you're probably not going to be super confident doing that. Of course. Um, well, so you're it's hard be more to think confident that right after you get that one phone number than you were exactly the 99 other times. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So for guess, the, it, yeah. So it, it really just kind of depends on what level you start at. Um, you know, cause I get guys from all, all over the place. A lot of guys who are, are, they're really confident and they, they feel like they've got their shit together. Um, but they're just terrified to approach and, or they're ter they're, they make a bad first impression just because they might be leading with their resume um, you know, on, when they go on a date, they start talking too much about themselves rather than listening to her. There's all these little mistakes that we, that we don't know we're making. Um, so just approaching a woman, for example, 
Um, if you haven't done that, you're going to be probably a nervous wreck. Like I've, I've worked with guys who are, you know, um, really high up in special ops military guys. And they're like, I'd rather go out and into a war zone and face bullets than walk up to this girl, you know, cause it's, it's terrifying if, if you haven't done it. But then as you do it, you quickly realize, okay, this is not that bad. The rejection is actually kind of fun. Um, and if you do it where you have other guys who are kind of supporting you, um, or if you have a wingman or, you know, you find a way to, to kind of reframe that rejection in your mind to a growth mindset, or this is something that's, you know, I'm just going through these growing pains quickly. You become, you, you kind of become immune to it. You stop caring. And then it's a lot easier to quote unquote, be yourself. You know, everyone says, Oh, you should just be yourself. It's like, well, if myself is a nervous, you know, unconfident wreck around a beautiful woman, I'm not going to be myself. Like I'm not being myself. I'm being this nervous guy. Right. So you, you can blow through that nervousness by simply exposure therapy. You know, it's, it's, that's really what it, what it comes down to because exposing, exposing yourself. You yeah. Exposing yourself to that fear. Um, it's great to have, you know, some, some training wheels or, you know, floaties, whatever you're learning to swim. You don't want to just throw someone in the deep end and watch them drown, you know? So there's, there's some, you know, I call them training wheels that I give guys like, here's a, here's an opening line to go up and say to a girl, not like a cheesy thing, but just something as simple as like, Hey, I saw you and I had to risk embarrassing myself to, to come meet you. Right. And kind of use that in any situation. And she's going to be like, right. Oh, okay. The guy's taking a risk. He's confident. Obviously he understands it's an embarrassing, you know, sort of thing to do. Um, or if it, it's something even, even more simple, like, Hey, I'm really nervous to to talk to strangers. I'm just trying to get over my social anxiety. I just wanted to come say hi, and now I'm going to run away. You know, I'll I'll have guys do that. They'll do that five or ten times, and after doing that, they'll be like, "Wow, this is like this isn't that bad." It wasn't so bad, right? She didn't burn me to the stake um, or breathe fire out of her mouth. That's that's interesting. Yeah. So, right. So I think it's I, I hear you. It's like a combination of like to build that confidence, that momentum with with the opposite sex or the same sex, depending, right? Um, yeah, you, you gotta, it's a combination of like having, like building that confidence from within as well as externally doing certain things, right. For lack of a better term, fake it till you make it of, you know, like you're just saying, exposing yourself to doing just like the action. Cause I'm always telling people, right. Fear is an opportunity. And if you can look at it that way, instead of a, Oh my God, like I'm going to stop me dead in my tracks and you'll never build momentum that way. But if you can actually look at it like, okay here's an opportunity to grow and what's the worst that could happen. And that doesn't happen. And you're like, Oh, that wasn't so bad. Right. And then you do it again and you force yourself to do it again and again. And that itself builds confidence. So it's kind of a combination of the two. It's interesting. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a circle, you know, you, you just keep going around the wheel and uh, the more you do it, the more confident you get, the more results you get. And you just keep going in that cycle. And then um, eventually it can, it can become addicting. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll have guys where they're like, I hated dating. And now they're like, I, I'm having the most fun I've ever had, you know, just kind of enjoying being a bachelor. And of course there's ways to do that where, you know, you're not, you, you can do that with integrity and, and with authenticity. You don't have to go and, you know, break a bunch of girls' hearts or <laughs> be, be that sort of guy. Um, right. but right. yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, it, it's, a, it's very empowering. I mean, for me, it was. You know, I felt like growing up, um, you know, I, I just had this ex insane kind of lack of power. I didn't understand, you know, what women responded to. Um, I just kind of always thought, oh, just be nice to them. And, you know, I'd show up in, in high school, bring extra copies of my homework for the girls that I liked. And I would be like, well, why aren't they sleeping with me? They're always sleeping with, with these other guys who don't seem to care as much. Um, and so... You know, it, it took it took a while to kind of get over that paradigm shift. I think our culture misleads us quite a bit in terms of telling us what women want or you yeah. know how attraction works. But um, you know, there. Hey, we'll go, go, can we pause yeah. there? Sorry to interrupt. Sure, what, sure. What, do you, what would you say some of the biggest myths are that you've seen with what women want, what 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 people think makes them attractive and whatnot? Um, one myth is sort of this idea that you should be persistent. Um, and I, yeah, in, in some cases, persistence might pay off. But in most cases, the guy who's being persistent is more the guy who's being needy. 
and two available and and coming on too strong you know women are women are very savvy so if if she's interested in you she's usually going to make it pretty obvious because most women understand that guys are a little bit thick-headed when it comes to reading their signals so right. if she likes you odds are you'll know so a lot of the time they'll get guys like oh, i don't know if she likes me and i keep asking her out and she's always flaking it's like you got to cut that out you have to you have to put yourself in a position where women are coming to you um if, if you really want to succeed you have to make yourself a scarce resource essentially right if she feels like there's no other guys or if she feels like she's the only one interested, she's going to lose interest. So, okay. So that's, yep. That's interesting. So it's like that whole playing games thing, right? And you hear your whole life. It's like girls don't want you to play games. And then yet you, in reality, it feels like they do because if you're too available, then they run the other way. Um, yeah. My experience when I was dating, I would, I would agree with that, that no matter how awesome you are, if you're too like, let's spend every second together, like, um, all over them. And, you know, nobody, nobody likes that. It's like, it's, nobody does. It's just, it's too much. Yeah. Um, and I think the guys sometimes confuse that. Well, you said you wanted a guy, a, a good guy, you know, that was gonna be around. It's like, well, yeah, that's, they do want that, but you can't be, you, you can't, they can't be, you can't be their world. Right. So in other words, like, right. If everything is about, like, like you have to have your own thing going on. Like you were saying earlier, like you develop in sports and stuff, you develop that kind of like how to, how to kind of live your life and confidence. And then, you know, and, and we were talking about uh, attractive factors, you know, your job, what you do for a living, having a purpose, like all those things are important to women. So you got to kind of factor them all in. You can't just look at one little thing at a time. That's really interesting. Totally. And And what you just said about, you know, she wants to essentially, you know, as a metaphor, like hitch her wagon to your rocket ship, right? She wants a guy who's going somewhere. And right. if, if you're, you know, if you're so available and you have all this time, you know, and, right. and you're not working on something bigger than just yourself, like if she's your purpose, she's going to lose attraction for you. Like as a man, you should have a purpose and, you know, it shouldn't be your woman. There's a really good book by uh, David Data called The Way of the Superior Man. It's kind of like one of those books you read on the toilet. Um, real fast, but it has some amazing principles. And that's one of the big ones in there. Um, you know, your woman should not be your purpose. Uh, and yep. you should, you know, if you're walking your purpose, you'll be naturally attractive and, and you're not going to be too available because you're just busy, you know? So it's not, it's not about manufacturing, you know, well, if you have no options, obviously you want to, <laughs> you don't want to be super available. Be like, ah, yeah, I don't have any options. That's maybe something you want to keep to yourself, but um, as you well, but again, take on that sort of mentality more. You, you probably mm -hmm. want to work on that first anyways, right? Because you're going to have a better shot of getting the type of person you want to be with. Like, exactly. If you don't have, if you haven't worked on yourself, all right, that's where it starts. Just like we started this conversation, you got to water the roots. You can't just pull on the, right? And so you got to get that confidence in yourself with your mindset going in the right direction. Um, and then that encourages, like you said, I call it the success loop. When you were talking about that loop. It's, um, and I talk about this, it's, you know, you take the action and that action you have success with and you have, it builds a little bit of confidence and then it prompts you to want to take more action. You take more action, you have a little bit more success and then so on. And you, you want to get in that loop, right? And you can't do that without yeah. taking action. Um, at the same time, you know, right, that confidence is something that you're, you're building slowly but surely and you can't really fake that for too long, right? Like you can come off and be like, oh, I'm unavailable, right? So somebody just listening to you right now right. might go, oh, I'm just going to be really unavailable. It's like, no, it's the whole, <laughs> you got to have both, right? You, gotta, yeah. Yeah. you can't just be unavailable because then when they do actually spend time with you, you'll be like, this guy's got no confidence. Why did I waste my time? Totally. Um, totally. Yeah, you need, you need the whole package. Very, very interesting stuff. So what would you say would be your top um, – like the, the top habit you'd want to develop in, in the dating world. If you, if you're a modern day dater and you're out there and you're trying to find the, the person of your dreams to spend the rest of your life with, um, uh, maybe first of all, how, how would you go about finding them? Second of all, what would be the habit that you would want to have mm -hmm. to make sure that you got that person? Yeah. So, I mean, everyone knows the best way to, to meet your significant other is through friends. Right. And, um, you know, if you look at most couples, they met through their social circle. 
Um, and this day and age, as we talked about, like online dating is such a huge kind of draw. But I tell guys all the time, if if you kind of take the, you know, if you look at it kind of like, I don't know, hunting versus farming, right? If, if you're willing to put in the time to harvest the crop at the end of the season, you're going to have a ton of options. So if you do the work to build a social circle, you know, you surround yourself with cool, pe- cool, interesting people. Um, those people are going to bring a lot of wh- interesting women into your life and you'll have tons of dating opportunities. Um, or, you know, you could try to be more like a hunter and pick, try, you know, try to find dates here and there on online dating sites, which is really tough. Um, so my advice is always build a social circle, um, you know, be an interesting guy, do interesting things, draw interesting people into your life and you'll meet women pretty easily. And the other thing that you need to do is you need to get over your fear of rejection. Cause even if you have a social circle and there's a lot of, you know, beautiful women in there, if you're scared of rejection, you're going to get friend zoned most of the time. That's right. They, the, again, they can smell yeah. it. Exactly. And so to combat that, the, the best way is just that exposure therapy of approaching women approach them, you know, during the day, approach them when you're not expecting to approach them. And I've got tons of resources on how to do that and how to feel comfortable doing that. And very quickly, you'll have a huge abundance of of women in your life. It'll help grow that social circle as well. You'll kind of be tackling both sides. You're you're working on the, the lead generation. You're also working on kind of your sales pitch, in essence, by doing those approaches and getting over your your fears. Nice. Well, that was a very good answer to my question. So the first one is how, you know, how to go about finding them, right? Build out your social network. Um, You mentioned you're like, everybody knows, but you know, I don't think everybody thinks about that. You know, I, you know, I think a lot of people are like, where's the best place to meet somebody, you know, and and I do think a lot of people go to the online, but that's, I like your take. And, you know, I, I, it's an interesting to hear, you know, that, that it's like that, that the online stuff is as great, of a opportunity as it is, and that you can like meet anybody from around the world. Uh, it's really not too practical because of like you were saying, you know, the, the attractive people are just going to get so many messages. Right. And then, uh-huh. and they have so many choices anyways, and they don't really need to, I, yeah, it's interesting. And that, and yeah, so, but you're, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, it, it certainly works, but I just think uh, as a return on your time investment, it's a really poor a strategy. You know, yeah. if you go out, and I, I tell guys, like, if, even if you've never approached a woman before in the street, if you can get a buddy and you can go and you can do 10 approaches, right, maybe it takes you a couple of days, the odds of, of you getting a date with someone you really like are astronomically higher than spending that same amount of time online. Plus, you mm-hmm. get to see what they look like in person first, too. And you're building Whoa. confidence. You're getting over your uh, fears. You're, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's great advice. Right. Um, and obviously, like you said, it's a little bit harder right now based yeah. on you know <laughs> approaching people and you got a mask on um but hopefully you know that won't be too much longer and so people can be building this this part of themselves in the meantime and 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 you know f- learning from you and your teachings on how to sort of get ready to hit that dating that dating circuit hard and i love that the whole like action i'm all about action 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 and so i'm always telling people that's the only way to build momentum and you're what do you call it the the approaching uh the basically just just basically approaching as many times as possible yeah just getting over your your fear of rejection mm-hmm. yeah just uh getting over your fear of rejection you know i, I like to game. say turn yourself into a I, I like to say turn yourself into an approach machine to get over your fear and then you can scale it back <laughs> Ooh, i like that turn yourself i'm gonna write that turn yourself into approach machine um somebody asked real quick what the name of that book was Oh, it was The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. Nice. Let's see. Do we have any other questions before we wrap up here? Enjoying the combo? Yeah, this is good stuff. Dating sites suck. Yes, they do. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing, dropping some of this wisdom on us. I, this is something I could talk about a lot more. And I, I know, you know, for again, for me, I'm not single. So, but it's fun to talk about it and just to know kind of, how, how yeah, it's always the dating interesting, world right? has changed. Yeah, you know, because I mean, I, mm-hmm. I don't, I mean, all my friends now are, are close to my age, married, most of them. And so I don't really see what's going on with, in the dating world. And um, I just assumed that, that the online and all that stuff was still like the apps was like still the main way people met each other. So that's, um, and maybe it is still 
for the most part, but you're saying it's not the best way. And I think I, I, I definitely agree with that based on what you were saying, because you, in person, you can't be, you know, you, you can Photoshop stuff. You can this, you can that, you can fit. But then like that, this, when you actually look in somebody's eyes and you just never know when you look in somebody's eyes, if it's going to be, you're going to have that spark versus totally. doing this on an app. Like you, you can't yeah, tell exactly. somebody may look awesome <laughs> in, a, in a visual image that they've Photoshopped. And then you waste, like you said, it's more bang for your buck. Like you waste your time doing all this versus, and then you meet them in person. You're like, oh man, I've been, I've been messaging. I've been talking with this person. This is a way, this is, this is not going to work at all versus, you know, immediately both sides, right. the guy and the girl um, will know if there's a connection there. So great advice. And then just keep doing it, people just keep, keep approaching. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you just, you, it is, it's like anything else, any fear, the more you face it, the more it goes away because you realize it's really not that bad of a thing. Exactly. It's like what, what scared you the day one. It's like, oh, that's easy. No big deal. Um, so, yeah, I, so where, it, totally what you said about action, motivation. It's it, Yeah, it's all. And, and I think, especially when the pandemic starts to slow down, like dating, in-person dating is going to come back with a bang. Like, I think, you know, festivals, all sorts of bars. I think it's going to be like the, the roaring 20s again, you know, after the Spanish flu. I think uh, – people are going to really come back and, and want to be social and be out there and, and uh, try to, you know, the dating sites, you're not going to grow on a dating site. That's the thing. You know, you're, you're just going to get, you're not improving yourself, at least when you go out and you get rejected or, you, you know, you approach, or even when you go on a date, at least you're improving because you're, you know, you're putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. But that's why I, I recommend staying off them because you're just not, you know, there, there's, there's no ancillary benefit other than maybe you get a date, but that's about it. Very well said, my man. So where can people find you to, to get more, to get more knowledge dropped on them? Sure. If you go to my site, uh, innerconfidence.com, I N N E R confidence.com. Um, I've got a cool download there just to teach you how to run a uh, successful first date, which is something guys struggle with a lot. Um, just all the logistics and the plan there. Um, or right. follow me on Instagram. Uh, and I have a link on my Instagram to my TikTok where I do daily uh, advice videos. Um, nice, man. Well, I'm so glad that we did this. I'm thrilled to have had you on. Thank you, Robbie, for your time. And thank, no, you, thank for you so much for having me. Wisdom. Yeah, you kind of you, you, you put me in a time machine. I kind of went back in time and was trying to think about my dating and all that. And it's it's been a while. But it is it's a fascinating. I love that you said that. You know, you just you you struggled with it, and so you just decided to like study it and and like master it, and that's that's what it's about. Like you know, it's like you weren't you, you didn't like ninety nine out of a hundred people just run away and say, you know what, yeah, I suck at this. It is what it is. I'll never you know, and you would have never been good. Instead, you said, I want to figure out how the, to unlock the unit the principles within all this, and and how to. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. I struggled when I was in in college. I was suicidal. And for me, it was, I, I discovered a self-help book and I was like, whoa, there's another way to look at the world. I want to learn how, what, what does happiness mean? How do you become? And so I did kind of the same thing, you know, we, you know, you did it yeah. with dating. Um, and so I love that. So hats off, kudos to you for doing that. And it sounds like you're, you're kicking butt with it. So keep doing it, man. Thanks. Well, like, likewise, same to you, man. And yeah, the way you described that was almost identical. So very cool. Yeah. Awesome, bro. All right. Well, thanks again, man. And thanks everybody for joining and we'll talk soon, bro. Thanks, brother. Thanks, guys. Okay. See you later. See ya. That's it for today's episode of the Five Core Life Podcast with Will Moore, founder of More Momentum. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have not already, please make sure to subscribe and follow the podcast wherever you are listening or watching this so that you get notified when new episodes air every week. And if you've not joined the Five Core Life Facebook group, I encourage you to join that and see what all of the fuss is about. There's some awesome content designed to get your momentum going, including a monthly giveaway to win a complimentary coaching call with the Will Moore. The Facebook group is currently the only place to get Will's dedicated attention on your five core journey. If you're feeling stuck or just want someone to cheer you on, then that is the place you need to be. There's nothing like a community of people on the same journey to get you fired up, kicking butt, and taking names. So come join us. Get moving. Gain momentum. Join the movement. Join Emmett by going to moremomentum.com to take a free life evaluator quiz on where you currently stand in each of your five course.